Today I'm gonna go through some audio updates Adobe has made with Thin Premiere Pro, but then in the whole ecosystem that seem to be really powerful. But then I wanna go through some audio request features that I have personally and I've seen across forums and Facebook groups that shouldn't be that hard for Adobe to stick on the next update. And the latest update that's kind of caught me off guard is that instead of square boxes now for Eclipse, they've got a bit of a curve, which I don't mind to be honest. Because when you zoom out, you can see them a bit clearer. So I'm, I'm kind of enjoying that. But while we're here, let me show you a couple of uh, audio tips that might help you out. First, in case you didn't know, you can show your audio keyframes and then hide them as well. I always found that when you show your audio keyframes, the whole thing just looks so janky and messy. And it's really hard to see what's going on. I just hide the keyframes unless I need to edit something. And then if you're editing audio especially, make sure you show the audio time units because if you don't, you can only move your audio every frame. But if you show audio time units, then you can make super precise adjustments as far as your audio clips go. So if you're sound designing, podcast editing, it, this is like a game changer for you. Obviously we've had this for a few updates that it'll audio tag stuff, but in case it doesn't audio tag stuff, you can tag them yourself. Now I've done this in a few projects where I've selected all my sound effects. If Adobe hasn't tagged them, you just tag them as sound effects. But then I take my music, make sure that's tagged, but then select the music and then duck against the sound effects. And in that, I found that your whole mix is a lot cleaner. It'll duck the music where it needs to automatically. You can mess around with the sensitivity, duck them out, fade duration, all that kind of stuff. But usually when you put a sound effect in, it just blows up the mix and it hits the red. You can adjust that. But sometimes if they're stacked on top of each other, it's inevitable. So this way you can get a bit of a cleaner mix. A big update this time is Adobe Enhanced Version 2, which is a bit ridiculous to be honest. I recently posted a video on our Shorts feed where I take a Casey Neistat video that was 13 years ago and the audio is all muffled. And through Adobe Enhanced Version 2 and a few other tricks, I managed to recover it. But the thing is, this time around, they focused on making it a lot more natural. Whereas version one, which is still available, they tried to make it studio. Version two, I feel like they try to retain some of that natural sound of your own voice, which is pretty good. So you've got some options there. Now this next feature is only available in Premiere Pro beta at the minute. And I hope to bring it in the regular version because it's a lot more useful than you think. And once you get used to it, I promise you, you won't be able to go back. It's called dynamic waveform. So what this does is, it dynamically changes the shape of the waveform when you adjust the keyframes. Now, you think this is a bit of a dumb update, but to put it in perspective, even dedicated programs that edit audio don't have this. They might have it where you can adjust the clip gain, and we had that in previous versions of Premiere Pro, but to actually automate volume and the waveform to react to that is gonna be a game changer as far as productivity goes, because you can step back and you can zoom out and you can see where the waveform dips. And you'll find yourself using that more than even, dare I say, like generative fill. But it's, it's a great, great feature that gets you out of sticky situations. But as far as productivity goes, to just zoom out and see everything clear, I think it's going to be pretty clutch. And now some feature requests that I don't think they're that ridiculous, to be honest. And people across forums and Facebook groups have been requesting these. And especially when you give us things like generative fill, these aren't that ridiculous. First one is, when I drag a group of clips in, audio or video, just allow me to create a track per clip. I don't know why that feature is not available. I use that a lot in programs like Ableton where I just press control and drag all the clips and it'll just stack them. And especially when it comes to editing podcasts and interviews, that feature would come in clutch because often what you're doing is dragging a bunch of stuff and it always puts them in a line. I just want them stacked up. so. Please. Second thing I think would be dope to have is in the audio mixer, being able to save the track signal chain. At the minute, what you can do is copy it and paste it on another one, which is dope. I've got like a starter project file and I have to open that up, copy stuff across, but it'd be dope to just be able to recall it. Cause at the minute you can save presets and just drop them on the clips. But I want to be able to save a preset for the whole track. So any changes made would be made across the board. Last feature request for me, and I think it'd be super dope to have, is being able to extract room tone off an audio clip. Now at the minute, generative fill will fill in the gaps if you extend it. Programs like IRX11 by Isotope already do that, but it's on the advanced package that's super expensive. It's already doing it for audio clips here and there. So it is analyzing the actual audio clip but it'd be more useful to be able to have a minute or two of just pure room tone. Don't forget to subscribe and in the comments below, let us know what features you'd like to see in future Premiere Pro updates.